All right, tonight was a big night because this is the first time I've ever gotten past one gigabit per second in download speed with a single modem for my home internet service. Now I have a Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile home internet in my house and I do lots of testing for them. This latest modem is the Snapdragon X75 modem. And so this modem chip is the latest and greatest. In fact, the iPhone uh, 16 Pro was slated to have an X75, but recent teardowns have actually shown that it has a X71 modem. So this truly is one of the latest chips that's out there today. And it has some really good features. I'm not gonna go into all the details about what that uh, modem can do. But the main highlights is it can technically do up to 10 gigabits per second of download speed and three and a half gigabits per second of upload. And it achieves that by doing carrier aggregation. So it combines more and more bands and it can combine up to five bands in the 5G sub six um, um, spectrum. You can actually do 10 on the millimeter wave side, but for my purposes, up to five that I can do on the 5G and I actually got it to do uh, four at least on the 5G side. I'll show that in a second here. Now, the device I'm using is from Chester Tech Repairs. I do give a discount. It's uh, $45 off and that's using code NaderTater. You can get lots of links down below in the video description as well as the first comment. Um, I do ask that you do hit the like button for this video and consider subscribing to my channel as well. That helps me to keep growing. Now, this right here is not it actually. This here is another Chester Cheetah modem here. This one is also not the one I'm talking about because it is this one that I have powered up now. Now, you might say, well, Nate, these look awful a lot like the same. That's because this guy, Alfredo, he doesn't care about how they look. And you probably shouldn't either because it's what inside that matters. So don't judge this uh, gateway by its box that it's in because it looks very similar to the other ones. In fact, I write on the Sharpie on the bottom side so I can remember which one is which. So um, don't um, think that all the boxes you find online that have this same uh, case are the same thing because it really is the guts that are inside that matter. So Alfredo puts these together actually at his shop. I think it's in Chester, New York. And then he ships these out to you um, as fast as overnight. So um, let's go into here and show you my speed differences. Now I compare it to a T-Mobile um, G4AR, which is their white modem, and it does have external antenna ports on it. And I also attach it to a waveform 4x4 uh, MIMO panel, or now it's known as the Quad Pro uh, panel. So this is a external antenna that you can add. You simply unscrew antennas here that are included. Uh, on here are you screwed into the back of the G4AR so I'm going to show you that testing here in a second. So let me first um, go into the speeds and show you the, my speed differences between the uh, stock T-Mobile modem and then I'll go into a little bit of the settings as well so you can see what the settings are. They have refreshed the uh, user interface here somewhat. So um, note that I am using um, technically in this I'm actually using a T-Mobile business SIM but you can use a T-Mobile home internet SIM you could use a Verizon uh, home internet SIM actually you could use a AT&T home internet SIM you could use a tablet plan a phone plan all that kind of stuff um, different plans might require some different tweaks and settings I have other videos on that you can also reach out to um, Chester Tech Repairs for uh, some tips and tricks or instructions on how to do that all right, so I'm going to go through a couple pictures. I think this is the quickest way for me to show it to you. So here is me in the G4 AR. So this is the T-Mobile Home Internet Gateway. And this is the stock setup. So you can see the bottom there, it says directional and omnidirectional. That's the internal antennas. In fact, um, the fact that I got the directional one uh, to connect means that this is the best setup I can get out of that stock gateway with where it's at actually up on the third floor. Of, of my house third floor loft space so you can see here this is the LTE metrics I'm on, on B66 here's the 5G metrics I'm on N41 which are um, you know N41 is T-Mobile's best um, you know 5G ultra uh, capacity um, one they offer the challenge here is with these gateways they don't tell you more because I know that they're probably actually adding more bands at least I hope so and I think so based off their speed but they only show you one uh, the primary band basically of the LTE and the 5G 
but it does tell me that they are on 5G NSA, which is non-standalone, which means it does have a LTE anchor on it. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So the speeds I'm getting tonight actually were 416 down and 4.42 up. Now that speed changes all the time. That's why all my testing, I do it back to back. So tonight all this testing was done together with these devices. If you look at some of my other videos, my speeds could be wildly different, and that just depends on the tower and you know all types of other factors that play into the role here. So for this testing, 416 down and 4 up with the stock gateway. Also, you can look at the pings down lower as well for other um, health information. Other thing, if you test with a different service, you're going to get different speeds. So this one actually about the same download speed, but actually significantly faster upload up to 11 here. Still not great, but this gives you an idea of roughly where the stock uh, G4AR was at. So then I hooked up the external antenna to the gateway. If you look here, my metrics improved drastically uh, versus the stock ones. And you can see in the bottom it says external, but it is funny enough on the same band. So B B66 for LTE and for the 5G, it was on N41 again. So. Um, now, when I did that, my speeds increased to a little over 500 for download and um, a massive increase in the upload. 43, I've shown that many times with this waveform external antennas. I can drastically improve that and I won't get into the reasons why. It, it will vary based off your exact um, situation. For me, this means that for my upload to stink, it means that my uh, device my gateway is having trouble getting the signal back towers obviously are a lot more powerful they can get the signal to me but you got to get back to them and that's where the um, the antenna the waveform antenna in my case is helping me out a lot all right so what people really want to know here is for this now the chester tech repair cheetah v2 x75 that's what this one is um, i put it into 5g uh, NSA mode, which means it's using LTE and 5G uh, to connect here. You can see it's using band B2, and I can do band locking. I won't get into that in this video. Um, and then as my uh, secondary LTE band, I have band B66, and then I have uh, two band N41s. And the, the key thing here, I know it's kind of cryptic, but if we look at the um, the numbers here, it says... Uh, if we go down to the second the bottom line, I guess to make it easy, it says SCC and then it says 502.110, but then the comma 11. That 11 is the bandwidth that that um, N41 signal has, and that is critical to getting this high throughput. So that 11 is 90 megahertz of bandwidth. The one up above that one is 12, which is even better. So that's uh, 100 megahertz. Of bandwidth so that means combined when it carrier aggregates that n41 uh, twice i have 190 megahertz of n41 which is incredible compared to when i first got this stuff i had to be lucky if i had 20 megahertz of it so that um, by itself can drastically increase my speed even with the same signal quality uh, so it's really complex i'm not going to get into it but just know that that is one of the key factors that's helped with these faster modems is more bandwidth capability and can add multiple um, signals together to add up to that more bandwidth so this is on nsa right so 5g nsa my speeds without this is just the stock unit without a uh, external antenna was 580 down and 49 up and if you remember that's actually uh, pretty similar to the um, stock gateway with the external antenna. So, um, you know, you can kind of almost, in this case, and it might, probably doesn't always work out this way, but they're about equal of having this modem by itself, no antenna with the G4AR with the antenna. Okay, so then I wanted to switch to 5G SA, which is 5G standalone. This gets rid of LTE altogether. Now you're only connected to 5G. So what this shows you here is now I have my N41 as my primary with the 12. So that's 100 megahertz of N41 as my primary connection. And then I have two bands, N25. N25 is another. That's an old Sprint uh, band. It's a good band typically. And then we have, again, another um, N41 in there. So 
this is where I'm going to say there's some caveats here because I did have a little bit of trouble getting it to lock into this. When I first went into 5G SA, it wanted to put N25 as my primary and that would be a lot slower for me. And I'm not sure why I even talked to Alfredo Chester Tech Repair. He actually helped me out. Um, he's very good at helping out. He'll log in and he'll even um, you know mess with your settings uh, live um, to help you out if you really need that. But what we found was I could um, band lock and turn off N71 and N25 to force the modem to connect to N41 first. And then we went back and we added in N25 and N71 to allow it to connect back to those, but not as the primary band. So you might have to do some little trickery here and there to get your absolute fastest signal. Um, and that's just the, the way sometimes this works with cellular internet. So when I did that, I got 876 down and 24 up. So I was really happy with that download speed. Um, that was incredible. This is with now the um, the waveform back on there. So I, I forgot to mention that part. Um, so I did add the waveform back on there. To get, now you'll notice there my upload is subpar. I, I would like it to be better, but that is tied to really those bands of which ones I'm connected to. Sometimes I could get higher uh, upload but then I get lower download in there as well. So um, when I ran it on fast.com, I would I surpassed the 1.1 gigabits per second. It didn't stay there. And you know, if you ever go to fast.com, you'll see that it always fluctuates. Then it ends on its final number. The final number uh, was ending at, at 850 megabits per second down. But this one does show 50 megabits per second up. So I can't explain exactly why I would see that big of a difference in the upload speed on the fast.com versus the speedtest.net. But just note that I have seen uh, more challenges with testing when I get into these faster speeds. I mean, everything starts to matter. You know, obviously, even if you're using Ethernet cable, if you're at a one gigabit per second port, you can't surpass the one gigabit per second speed. So if you're using Wi-Fi, interference matters, the signal quality matters. It gets much harder for me to test when I get this type of speed um, because I can see more variation in there. But overall, very impressive X75 modem in this guy certainly does open up a lot of options of um, combining signals and getting more bandwidth. So let me go in and show you real fast the settings on this modem. All right, so what I did is I just connected to the Wi-Fi on this modem, and then I can just log in uh, to it on this 192.168.100.1. All right, so here is this uh, web interface. Now, it is a refresh look. If you've looked at some of my old videos, it will look different. Um, a lot of the same information is in there, just trying to make it more user-friendly. Uh, Alfredo is working with a developer to constantly improve this, so if you have any suggestions, feel free to let him know at Chester Tech Repair. But if we go into here, there's a couple. Um, I'm not going to go through all these different settings. Um, you can. Uh, you, it is a Wi-Fi um, router, and you, you can turn off the Wi-Fi if you wanted to. Uh, you can do some changes. There is a um, 2.5 gigabits per second WAN port on there that you can change to a LAN port. Um, that can be useful for you. Um, it does have some features like, you know, uh, able to add VPN or zero-tier DDNS, that kind of stuff. Um, but it's not like a super crazy advanced uh, router by any, any means. You cannot do a full uh, bridge mode on it. That's a common question. It does have IP pass-through, so you can pass through the IPv4, IPv6 um, to, you know, something downstream. But there's no full bridge mode. Uh, Cheshire Tech Repair does offer some other devices that do have a bridge mode in them. So in here, what I'll show you is the 5G network space. And then in the APN space, you can leave it in auto mode. The only thing you probably want to do is change the IP type. I think by default it's IPv4. Uh, switch that to IPv6 slash IPv4 so it does support IPv6 uh, as well in there. And I think there is another IPv6 yeah, on this uh, network page that you have to uh, also click on here on the, on the right side. You want to switch the, the uh, IPv6 on and turn on the NAT as well. But down here in the 5G, I can do my network mode. Right now, you can see that it's set in auto and auto. But if I want to force it into LTE or just 5G or 5G plus LTE, I can do that. As well as change it from 
NSA, which is non-standalone, and, and um, the S or the SA, which is a standalone loan. So those are options that you can select in here. The other key one is the band locking. So this is what I was showing before. For me personally, to make this one work, when I got into 5G SA, and I did not want N25 to default to be the primary, I just went in here, unchecked um, the N25, and just to be safe, I went ahead and unchecked N71, because really for T-Mobile, it's gonna be N25, N71, or N41 are going to be your bands that you'll have for 5G typically. And so then I hit save, and then it automatically, you don't have to restart or anything, um, it will just um, disconnect and not lock on to N25 or N71 anymore. And then once I got connected with N41 as my primary, then I clicked them back on, hit save again, and they, they added back as carrier aggregation as a secondary. You can also do lock community. This allows you to sell lock, which is actually a sell on a tower. Uh, so a tower has multiple cells, and you can actually force it to stay on a single cell, which is effectively tower locking the uh, the device if you wanted to do that. Uh, there's also TTL modification. Uh, that is an important uh, configuration that you uh, might need to do if you um, have specific SIM cards in this device. Same thing here for the AT commands. This has a easy IMEI revise one right here where you can type in uh, those numbers and hit edit and that is updating the IMEI on the device and then AT commands this is helpful this is something he's working on trying to fix because it's a little bit annoying that you have to type this in for me you can see my tablet remembers it but AT plus um, query carrier uh, aggregation information and hit enter this is going to query the signal metrics um, for this device and that's where um, I'm in the basement, so I get terrible signal. Uh, so you'll see it's just on uh, band N71 down here. But um, you can run that and you can get your information. You can also get some of the information in the 5G info page or the main home page. It shows you a little bit as well. So that's a high level overview of the settings. But you can see here, I've done lots of testing. I have many other devices, not just his. I have Altsys, I have Peplink. Um, you know, I have lots of different uh, devices that I test, uh, but this one is by far the fastest um, by itself uh, or with an antenna on it um, for a device, especially for download. Uh, the upload, I would like to um, get mine a little bit better. I think I can keep messing with some settings to get there because I know I do have more upload capability here at my house. All right, hopefully this was really helpful, and I'm uh, very excited now that I have some blazing fast internet. I never thought this would happen to me uh, after about four or five years ago of being stuck on a little 4G um, home internet modem or having DSL. Those are my really only options. Now I have gigabit capable speed uh, here at the house with a uh, SIM card. So that is crazy to me. Um, and I'm very excited to see how this technology keeps developing and growing and hardware like this is what helps enable that because really the carriers have the capability on the towers and it's a matter of getting devices that it can actually aggregate all of that speed and uh, pipe it through a single connection to you. So if you do have any questions, just put them down in the comments below. I do read them and I do try to get back to them uh, whenever I can. So I enjoy engaging with my viewers here and uh, let me know if you have any other ideas of types of testing that you want me to do and uh, we'll see if we can fit it in. So thanks for watching as always and take care.